Hello, everyone, and welcome to our uh, session one of our paper two, Quantitative Techniques, where we are going to have a discussion on uh, data collection. Uh, in this session, of course, we are going to uh, discuss a number of things. Among those, we have the definition of data. We are going to talk about the data collection methods. We are going to talk about the sources of data. Uh, we are going to talk about the types of uh, data. So in unit 1.1, we have the introduction. And here we are asking ourselves, what is data? So we have a definition for data here. And of course, we are saying data refers to uh, information, statistics, facts, uh, figures, numbers, or records. So we are saying that depending on the source, depending on the source of information, data may be primary, that is if it is collected afresh and for the very, very first time. Here we are saying data is original in character and data is secondary if it has already been collected by someone else uh, and has already been passed through the statistical process. So I've underlined all those very, very key words. We're saying data can be primary, data can be uh, secondary, okay? Data can be primary and data can be secondary. And of course, we are saying it is primary if it is uh, collected afresh and for the very, very first time. And then data is secondary if it has already been collected by someone else and it has already gone through what we call the statistical uh, process. So this is our very, very special uh, definition of data. And of course, we continue by saying uh primary data okay primary data should be collected only if secondary data is not available so you need to check in most cases you find that data has already been collected uh, by someone else but then you are going further to collect the same 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 data so we only collect data if secondary data is not uh, available so again you're going to be examined on the techniques uh, okay on the techniques uh, that are used in uh, the collection of primary data. So on the second slide, I take the second slide, where we have the various data collection methods or techniques, and they include one, we have observation, we have interviews, we have uh, questionnaires, we have case studies, we have focus group interviews, we have diaries, we have critical incidents, we have portfolios, and uh, many, many others. But of course, uh, you're going to be examined you're going to be examined on these three very very uh what i may say common okay data collection methods so i don't expect you to go to the exam at least without a description of uh, these three uh the advantages and disadvantages so in the interest of time i will simply take you to the slides and i show you that i've actually uploaded uh, the description of all these methods, the advantages and the disadvantages. So you can further read about these other uh, data collection methods like case studies, focus group interviews, diaries, critical incidents, and portfolios. These are other data collection methods, but really, really, I won't go into too much detail because this is a lot of theory and I want to keep enough time uh, for our computations. So, of course, starting off with observation, uh, we are saying that under observation, uh, data is collected through direct observation. Data is collected through direct observation without asking respondents anything. And of course, here we are saying there are some respondents who may not really respond verbally. They are not able to respond verbally and you can only observe their actions. So the only way you can collect data is by looking at their actions through observation. Uh, and of course, it has a number of advantages. Here I've said that this area you're going to read uh, I'm going to request you to re read this area. The advantages, uh, it has several of them. And then I also want you to read through the disadvantages here, okay? Disadvantages. So next we have uh, interviews. Interviews, this is another method of um, collecting data. And of course here we are saying it involves presentation of oral verbal stimuli instead of motivation, seeking oral verbal responses. So interviews can be structured, they can be semi-structured, they can be unstructured, and uh, you can have an interview schedule. So again, this is theory that I believe you can read and try to catch up 
uh, with the with the with the, the with the literature given in this method. Uh, we proceed, uh, of course, here. Uh, we we are given the advantages of uh, of interviews, and of course, one of the key advantages I see here is that uh, we have good response rate. The method is complete and immediate. Uh, possible uh, immediate questions. So you you can like add on more questions when you are interviewing someone. Uh, the interviewer, you are in control, okay, and you can give help if there is a problem to the respondent. Uh, one can in, uh, investigate mot uh, motives and feelings. Uh, the interviewer can use recording equipment. So it has several, several advantages. Uh, and of course, the response rate is usually good if you use interviews as compared to the other, to the other approaches. And I believe you can really read this area. And uh, of course, we have a number of disadvantages. It is time consuming. You need to set up the interview. You, you need to make appointments. It's time consuming. Uh, geographic. We have geographic limitations. There are areas where you cannot go to make interviews. It is expensive. Normally, need uh, normally need a set of questions. So again, I'm saying you can really read and appreciate this area. I've left the comment section. If there is anything that you need to really ask me, please send me those questions. Let them come in. Send me an email. I can usually respond if there is anything that is not coming out well. Um, next, we have the questionnaires. Okay. And we are saying that this method makes use of questionnaires which are distributed to respondents. Questionnaires can have questions that are open-ended, closed-ended, tabular, uh, whereby open-ended invite free responses, closed-ended you only allow responses to choose from alternative responses, okay? And tabular questions are answered by filling in uh, the table. So in this kind of uh, approach, you simply formulate your questions, put them on a form, and then you're going to distribute this form to the respondents. The respondents are going to uh, fill in uh, this questionnaire and thereby providing you with the required uh, responses. So um, really, why would we use questionnaires? In the next slide, we are saying why would we use uh, questionnaires? So we're saying questionnaires are uh, useful uh, method to investigate patterns, frequency, ease, success of use, uh, user needs, expectations, perspectives, priorities, and preferences, uh, preferences, user satisfaction with collection and service uh, shifts uh, in user attitudes, opinions, relevance of collections and services to use needs and trends. So um, usually when you look at the advantages uh, here, um, they are relatively easy to analyze. Uh, a large sample of given person can be contacted at relatively low cost. So questionnaires usually cover a big, big, big area as compared to interviews. As you have seen interviews, you can really, how many people can you interview, okay? You need to set up the interview. But for questionnaires, you simply distribute the questionnaires and people are able to fill in and respond. So you simply collect information from the questionnaires and you are able to analyze and come up with your primary data. So I request you really to read through all these advantages, go through the disadvantages, anything that you feel you do not understand about questionnaires, I request you that you uh, contact me, I will be able to respond. So don't go to the examination without reading the advantages, the advantages of questionnaires, observation, uh, and, uh, and uh, interviews. So we can move into uh, the other unit, uh, which the various sources of data. And of course, here we are saying that sources of data are categorized into two types. Namely, we have uh, primary, okay? If I can just uh, highlight this, we have uh, primary data sources. So of course, we mentioned that primary data is that data that is uh, original in character and has collected for the very first time. So uh, we are saying here that primary data is originated and collected specifically for the problem under investigation. Uh, we are saying that in research, primary data is the major source and is directly collected from the study organization using the above named tools, the questionnaires, the interviews, uh, and the observation and the, and the others. So uh, maybe what is not mentioned here uh, are the sources. So the sources of um, the sources of primary data we have research, okay. I want you to record this. We have research, we have experiments, we have uh, investigations, 
and we have case studies. So we can talk about uh, research. Okay. We have experiments. My handwriting is not good here. Experiments. We have, you can now add on investigations, uh, case studies. Okay. So those are the those are the sources of primary data w w through which you can get original original data research case studies experiments investigations then of course secondary data we are saying is data that has uh, already been collected and will complement primary will complement uh, uh, primary data so we are saying that this type of data is collected from other sources other than the primary sources so of course you know we can collect secondary data from newspapers from other research materials from the internet from publications among many many others so basically you're going to be examined on the on the sources and the types of data so this closes unit number one and of course i want you to now turn to uh unit number two